At 2 p.m. the ceremony begins. The dais party process to music after the staff have processed. Do so test on the centre microphone. One, two, one, two. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Thank you. Lovely. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the graduation ceremony for graduates of the Faculty of Education. In a few minutes, the graduation ceremony will commence. The procession of staff will enter first. After a brief pause, the university fanfares will announce the entry of the dais party. I will signal to you by this action that you are to rise and remain standing until both the staff procession and the dais party are seated. Please do not rise until I ask you to. May I also remind you that flash photography is prohibited in this auditorium. For the mutual comfort and enjoyment of all members of the audience, the university requests your cooperation in observing this rule. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, Vice-Chancellor, graduates, and our guest speaker this afternoon, Professor Gillian Mullen. It has always been the custom of Griffith University and its guests to gather for the purpose of conferring academic awards on its graduates. These occasions hold special significance not only for our graduates, their families and their friends, but also for the entire university community. On behalf of the Chancellor of Griffith University, it is my pleasure this afternoon to extend a very warm welcome to everyone present for this graduation ceremony. It is my particular pleasure to welcome Professor Gillian Mailing as our special guest this afternoon. Professor Mailing was appointed to the position of Chief Executive Officer of the Nepean Campus and Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University of Western Sydney in 1989, and she is also the immediate past President of the Australian Council of Education. May I say, Professor Mailing, how pleased we are that you are able to be present for this important event in the life of the university and how much we look forward to your occasional address later in the proceedings, in particular given the difficulties you've had with aircraft today. This afternoon, of course, is a special occasion for all of our graduates. We are here to acknowledge the commitment and effort of all of those involved in the studies which have led to the academic awards which will be formally confirmed in this ceremony. The Faculty of Education is the largest of our faculties at Griffith University. Originally established as the Mount Gravatt Teachers College at the time of its amalgamation with the university in 1989, the faculty was a campus of the former Brisbane College of Advanced Education. Its students and its staff contribute actively to the life of the whole university and if I might say so, the amalgamation has been a positive and affirming experience for all of those concerned. This event this afternoon represents the first of two ceremonies today for education graduates. This evening, other graduates from the faculty will receive their postgraduate awards in education, including research higher degrees. In this ceremony, we focus on those who have completed their studies towards a number of primary degrees and graduate certificates in education offered through the Faculty of Education. In a modern university that is responsive to the evolving requirements of a changing society, one expects to see evidence of innovation, evidence of incremental change and evidence of infrastructure development. I shall briefly draw to your notice selected highlights involving the Faculty of Education of Griffith University. In response to the changing needs within the education sector, the university has developed a number of new courses as well as new strands within existing courses in the last 12 months. These have included 
the bachelor degrees in music education, in adult and vocation teaching with honours, in technology education with honours and arts in justice administration with honours. In addition, new graduate courses have been offered in applied linguistics and vocational teacher development. This afternoon, we note the human side of this continuing evolution of the faculty's activities as we both confer awards on the final cohorts of graduates from courses that have now been phased out and also see the first cohorts of those graduating from courses that have recently been introduced. The Graduate Certificate in Policing, the Bachelor of Teaching Overseas Train, the Graduate Diploma of Applied Linguistics and the Graduate Diploma of Computer Education will all be awarded for the final time this afternoon. On the other hand, the Associate Diploma of Human Resource Development, the Bachelor of Arts in Justice Administration, the Graduate Certificate in Applied Linguistics and the Graduate Certificate in Higher Education will all be awarded for the first time this afternoon. The Griffith Institute for Higher Education, which was established last year, has made significant progress already. That progress includes a number of things. <coughs> Professor Paul Ramsden, director of the Institute, took up his appointment in September of last year. The Griffith Institute of Higher Education has been awarded a grant from the Committee for the Advancement of University Teaching to develop proposals for recognising and rewarding good teaching within the national university system. The Graduate Certificate in Higher Education designed to improve teacher qualifications of the university's academic staff has recently accepted its second intake. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be associated with a higher education institute which is as progressive and as innovative in its outlook as Griffith University is. The high ranking of the university in recent national quality assurance rounds, of course, was especially pleasing to all of us. We at Griffith are committed to innovation, we are committed to excellence, not only in the development of our academic programs, but also in the pursuit of new knowledge and in placing the universe, university's considerable cultural and intellectual resources at the service of the wider community. Recognition of that commitment and of the high quality of our shared achievements by the Committee for Quality Assurance and Higher Education is therefore particularly welcome. Our many graduates have earned much success and acclaim both in Australia and overseas, and rightly so, I might add, given their individual achievements. Those who graduate today will take their place amongst a growing band of whom the university is justly proud and I am sure will add to their national and international standing. Graduates are leaving this place of education and training to enter the profession which is arguably more critical than any other profession in assuring our future. In you and in your fellows lies our best hope for ensuring that the Australia of the future will continue to hold, if not improve, its place as an independent, self-reliant nation. A nation whose inhabitants, through the excellence of their education, have the expertise and have the knowledge to ensure that our economic base is secure and will continue to be so. A nation whose people are creative and are innovative, not only in generating the wealth on which civilised life must be based, but also in all aspects of the arts which so enrich our lives. And importantly, a nation also whose people have learned from those who teach them the understanding which will help them to enjoy all of the benefits of a rich and varied population without the evils of racial or sectarian intolerance. We cannot look forward to a secure and comfortable future unless we develop excellence, excellence in all of the pure and applied sciences and in all of the skills of administration and management. 
But this excellence cannot be achieved without teaching of the highest calibre, teaching from our early infancy to postdoctoral levels in both vocational and academic streams. This is the challenge that you new educators must take up. It is a goal that you must achieve for the Australia you want your children to live in. As we continue with this afternoon's proceedings, I express once again my warm congratulations to each of our graduates and extend to each and every one of you our best wishes for your lives ahead. I now call on the Dean of the Faculty of Education, Professor Rice Sadler, to present the graduates from that faculty who are to receive their awards at this ceremony. Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Associate Diploma of Human Resource Development. Margaret Askoff. <laughs> Paul Ferguson. <laughs> Leslie Friedrichs. Avril James. <laughs> Julie Ann McCabe. <laughs> Lorraine Moyes. Kenneth Nipperis. And Diane Scott. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Adult and Vocational Teaching, David Bancroft. Debbie Bortoli. Claire Burke. John Bray. Catherine Brown. John Kappa. Paulette Curtis. Eddie Davern. John Delaney. Gail Devonish. Narelle Donald. Alan Downey.
Tanya Fomin. Alice Fung. Carmel Green. Kaylin Gregory. Beverly Hall. Alex Hodge. Penelope Hodgson. Yvonne Hulbert. Di Lawler. Arthur LePage. Diane Lee. Michael Mansky. Wendy McCafferty. Colette McCotter. <laughs> Carolyn McGill. <laughs> Heinz Meinberg. Christine Miller. Edward Murray. Lee Newton. Glenn Newnan. <laughs> Brian O'Reilly. <laughs> Sharon Polar. Lyle Rooney. <laughs> Alfonso Rubio. <laughs> Annette Ruzika. Mark Slater. <laughs> Kevin Smith. <laughs> Michael Tovey. Peter Twyman. (laughs) 
Nikita Ustiansev. Gert Vandenberg. And Barbara Whiteside. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Arts in Justice Administration. Kathleen Adams. <laughs> Mary Louise Anderson. Dennis Buds. <laughs> Gloria Blazenka Kaluzik. <laughs> Alison Curtis. Ricky Davis. <laughs> Karen Ann Diebel. <laughs> Joanne Dunis. Kerry Ann Evans. Jason Gavin. Ramona Harbors. David Horscroft. Marilyn Jago. Victoria Kursop. Jackie Krasnig. Samuel Lamb Paxson, <laughs> Nicholas Lehman, <laughs> Christina Maniardis. Zach McAfee, Mark McBride, Erica Mirren, Meredith Paget. Simon P.K. <laughs> Rulon Peter. <laughs> Valentina Popova. <laughs> Malcolm Savage. Michael Seck. <laughs> Trudy Smart.
Ken Standish. Janice Taylor. Amanda Thornton Grimes. And Cassandra Wire. Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Teaching, Kylie Arnold. Samantha Bard. Robin Backhouse. Peter Brickley. Sarah Brown. Linda Burrows. Rachel Burton. Glenn Kafferkey. Trish Casey. <laughs> Melissa Castles. Lisa Kavanagh. <laughs> Katrina Chapman. Elizabeth Carolambus. Rebecca Collins. Danielle Condon. Michael Conley. Linda Conlon. <laughs> Leah Cush. <laughs> Kerry Daintree. <laughs> Kim Davis. Marianne Delaforce. <laughs> Elsie Dan Hertog. <laughs> Robert Dobson. <laughs> David Dory. Jeffrey Douglas. Nathan Ivey. Gerlinda Farmer. Annette Ferguson. Kelly Fitzgibbon. <laughs> Lauren.
Liza Flashman. Melissa Franklin. <laughs> Kerry Gaffney. <laughs> Kathy Gilbert. <laughs> Louise Gordon. Donna Gosson. <laughs> Sally Ann Gower. <laughs> Melinda Gramshaw. <laughs> Jenny Granter. Vanessa Gray. <laughs> Jennifer Greentree. <laughs> Nicole Grevitt. <laughs> Jill Harper. Cheryl Harvey. <laughs> Susan Hay. <laughs> Susan Hurd. <laughs> Jody Henderson. Catherine Hensel. <laughs> Catherine Hicks. <laughs> Ainsley Hine. <laughs> Roseanne Hoger. Samantha Hughes. <laughs> Jeanette Huntley. <laughs> Penny Hutchison. <laughs> Jeffrey Hiker. Heidi Isaacson. <laughs> Leanne Jackson. <laughs> Lisa Jeremy. <laughs> Catherine Jones. Amanda Kelly. <laughs> Penny Kinnear. <laughs> Pamela Knight. <laughs> Lisa Kruger.
Deborah Cooks. Kylie Lurch. Zinta Linda Manis. Kay Lawrence. Alicia Mars. Kylie McDonald. Jewel McInnes. Megan McKinney. Margaret Melisa. Robin Mann. Adam McClure. Anthony McDonnell. Cyben McGarity. Sarah McLennan. Kevin Meacock. Harley Mead. Brett Munro. Erin Murray. Vanessa Musty. Melissa Nilsson. Katie Notcher. Michael O'Gorman. Deborah O'Keefe. Karen Palmer. Risa Partorijo. Anna Patterson. Alison Payne. Annabelle Pettigrew. Leona Rafter. Judy Rawdon McVicker. Kimberly Rennie. Kim Sherry Richards. Joanne Sargent. Serafima Semovsky. (laughs) 
Lisa Shanahan. Christine Sheerman. Michelle Sterling. Ian Teekle. Fiona Tooth. Jan Tripp. Stephanie Underwood. <laughs> Jennifer Van Garland. <laughs> Samantha Waldron. <laughs> Liz Wallace. Pamela Walters, Barbara Ware, Kelly Wells, Michelle Wills. Natalie Wright. And Deborah Wyatt. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Teaching Overseas Trained. Gazella Kira. Kailian Sue. <laughs> Jimin Zheng. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, the Medal for Achievement in the Bachelor's Degree course may be awarded annually to the graduate with the highest academic achievement in a Bachelor's Degree course. The medal is not awarded if there is no candidate of sufficient merit. Deputy Chancellor, I am pleased to present to you graduates who have been granted the medals for achievement in Bachelor's Degree courses. Education Medal, Kay Lawrence. Justice Administration Medal, Dennis Buds. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, I present to you a graduate who has been granted the Bachelor of Teaching with First Class Honours, Gary Lian. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Teaching with Second Class Honours Division A, Karen Caton. and Joanne Hudson.
Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Graduate Certificate in Applied Linguistics. Krista Gersvich. <laughs> Tricia Halstead. <laughs> Dee Dee Kello. Mary Kent. Anne Lee. And Robin Nathan. Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Graduate Certificate in Higher Education. Pak Uyung. <clears throat> Kitken Loke. Thomas McVeigh. And Jerry Smith. Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Graduate Diploma of Adult and Vocational Education. Terence Bourne. Kyle Capel. Ron Chamberlain. John Costner. Catherine Cudahy. <clears throat> Terry Cullen. <clears throat> Daryl Fitch. <clears throat> Kirsten Fletcher. Elizabeth Gardner. <clears throat> Julianne Gilmore. <clears throat> Fiona Hawthorne. <clears throat> Wayne Hunt. Sandra Keller. <clears throat> Leslie Knowles. <clears throat> Ian Mariner. <clears throat> Annette Milne. Stacey Pittman. <clears throat> Greg Snedden. <clears throat> Faye Steinmuller.
Mark Tyler. And Norm Wotherspoon. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Graduate Diploma of Applied Linguistics. Jan Andrews. <laughs> Helena Askill. Michelle Carfrey. <laughs> Janet Haddon. <laughs> Leanne Heineke. Marian Harris. <laughs> Leanne Islin. <laughs> Margaret Keach. <laughs> Patricia Lehman. Kim McCarthy. <laughs> Anthea Tuklut. <laughs> Denise Turnbull. <laughs> and Jan Zhang. Deputy Chancellor, I present to you a graduate who has been granted the Graduate Diploma of Computer Education, Sandra Malloy. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Graduate Diploma of Education, Beth Bales. Madonna Barraclough. <laughs> Christina Dougal. John Ellis. Jason Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Helen Gamble. <laughs> Lucy Harding. <laughs> Hetty J. Wardener. Sandra Lee Cantor. <laughs> Pamela Leach. <laughs> Libby McGregor. Wendy Montague. Patrick O'Connor.
Gary Pfeiffer. Erica Ross. Janie Saunders. Nola Sprake. Maria Stephan. Josephine Witham. And Peter Woodland. Deputy Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Graduate Diploma of Special Education. Janelle Bresso. <laughs> Thomas Byrne. <laughs> Christine Derry. Megan Dingwall. Maureen Durney. Jane Forster. Lorraine Gaunt. <laughs> Helen Goodwin. <laughs> Susan Greeley. <laughs> Kath Hogan. Catherine Janetsky. <laughs> Heather Jensen. <laughs> Terry Keating. <laughs> Anna Laird. Anne Larkins. <laughs> Rose Marie Mannion. <laughs> Leanne Priestley. <laughs> Christine Sharrett. Denise Stanton. Kim Todhunter. Vanda Waller. Suwene Walsh. and Denise Woodrow. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, that completes the presentation of the candidates of courses of the Faculty of Education.
Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a brief musical interlude performed by the Griffith University Collegiate Singers.
I now call on the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Roy Webb, to introduce the guest speaker. Deputy Chancellor, we are honoured to have Professor Gillian Mailing, Mailing as our guest speaker for this afternoon's graduation. Professor Mailing was appointed to the position of Chief Executive Officer and Deputy Vice-Chancellor at the University of Western Sydney, Nepean, in 1989. She graduated from Melbourne University with a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Education and continued her studies at Stanford University where she completed her PhD. Professor Mailing commenced her career as a teacher, then followed a research career path at various universities and at the Australian Council for Educational Research. In 1980, she was appointed Dean of the Faculty of Education at Adelaide, the Adelaide College of Arts and Education, and then in 1984 was appointed Academic Director of the South Australian College of Advanced Education. In 1986, she accepted the position of principal in the Peden College of Advanced Education and in 1989 as Chief Executive Officer of the University of Western Sydney, Nepean. Professor Mailing was appointed to the Board of Governors when Nepean CIE became a foundation member of the University of Western Sydney. Professor Mailing has undertaken extensive consultancy research th throughout her career and is immediate past president of the Australian College of Education and vice president of the Australian College for Educational Research. Her particular field in education relates to strategic planning and evaluation. Currently, it is my personal pleasure to work with Professor Mailing as a member of the Committee for the Advancement of University Teaching. Mr Deputy Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Professor Mailing to deliver the occasional address. Thank you. Deputy Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, and ladies and gentlemen. It's a privilege to join you on an occasion such as this. Graduations always mark a step forward. And when your field is like mine in education, and like most of the graduates this afternoon, it's not only a step forward in terms of what you've achieved in learning, but it's a step forward as a professional. I've been fascinated over the past few years at the rise and the fall of debate in Australia about the teaching profession. I have colleagues in engineering who tell me quite simply it isn't and there is no debate. I have colleagues in medicine who think we would do better to have codes of ethics and to attend more to the protocols and systems and guard the boundaries of our profession. It is, from my point of view, a matter essentially for those who belong to the profession to define and take up the issues in it. And as today celebrates a graduation and a group of professions, professionals either joining that profession for the first time or gaining further credentials, it seemed appropriate to share with you and to see if I can enlist you in addressing further the development of the profession of educator in this country, which your Deputy, Deputy Chancellor noted at the beginning of this ceremony is one of particular significance to the community, to those with whom you teach and work, and to the nation as a whole. We've seen in the past years enormous change in education, and I think we're going to go on seeing that change. And with it, we're seeing all sorts of efforts and debates about teaching as a profession. 
We've had national profiles, national curriculum frameworks. We're having various endeavours to develop a competency framework for teachers. And we also have the establishment of the Australian Teaching Council. And yet, just at the moment, there's a pause in many of those endeavours. And I think it's in part a recognition of the extent to which those who are engaged in teaching need to address some really key issues and to come up with answers that match teaching and education and not simply copy or emulate another profession. And it's those particular issues I want to share with you because they seem to me to be a challenge which certainly I face as an educator. The first one comes to me particularly from Nell Nodding's writing where she's argued strongly about the central role of caring, of nurturing in the role of teaching. She's also noted that in the rise of scientific medicine, there was a loss of compassion among physicians who came to treat disease rather than people, and many of us would have had experience of that from our doctors. There's a challenge there for teachers and teacher educators in acquiring expertise, in being professionally trained to the highest standards, to yet not do so and not allow that training to become a detriment to their attentiveness to students as people. If you like, we have to find a way of acquiring technical expertise, of valuing it, but intermingling it and making it integral to the role of caring. Second, we need to think about the various approaches to management in education. There's been a great deal of emphasis in Australian education because of its particular history on the bureaucracies. It's rare, in fact, for those of us who work as educators in some role or another to not be part of some kind of bureaucratic organisation whether it's part of the system as a whole or whether it's working in a particular school or faculty or university. The bureaucratic model assumes, it doesn't always function, cl with clear lines of authority, delegation of responsibility, rules formulated by supervisors to govern subordinates and system-wide monitoring and evaluation. The professional approach emphasises the autonomy of teachers and of teacher educators in identifying student needs and developing appropriate responses to those needs. The professional model addresses the need of teachers for identification, planning, organising and carrying out their work. The bureaucratic one, the need of the school system to coordinate and to account. Both are critical. Yet each addresses a need that can be at the expense of the other. Bureaucracy serves the need for coordination of efforts by limiting and controlling the amount of discretion that individual teachers exercise. Professional autonomy releases teachers from such controls. It's been interesting to see the recent work on effective schools challenging the bureaucratic model. Effective schools minimise coordination and maximise the individual discretion of teachers. Principals in effective schools don't rely on the strength of position so much as, as they work to minimise status differences that exist between themselves and their colleagues and they avoid dictating solutions or directions. They certainly assume primary responsibility for key processes, 
but their teacher colleagues assist in the development of those processes and play a key part in decision making. If you like, it becomes a situation which is collegial and one in which there are different leaders depending upon the particular task in hand. We in our profession have to find a particular balance between the bureaucracy and professional autonomy. Thirdly, there's a good deal of work that shows that as professions mature, there becomes an increasing distance between the professional and client. Many of us who work in teaching or are associated with it would subscribe to an ideal of education which is shared and inclusive. Goals of educators typically include personal development as well as those related to academic work and professional or vocational preparation. We tend to want partnerships between teachers and parents and community members. At the same time, teachers need to relate to parents from the full social and ethnic spectrum rather than distancing themselves as remote experts. Teachers need to also know and recognise the difference between their expertise and those of parents. Fourth, there's the matter of working out the relationship between professionalism and equity. Historically, there's evidence that setting of standards in some professions, particularly actually in the United States, was perhaps a conscious effort on the part of some to drive women, immigrants and minorities out of their ranks. I'm thinking of Sykes' work in 86. The case is clearly documented in medicine and in law. Further, raising standards for entry to these professions has also had the effect of redistributing access to professional services. The better and the more highly trained doctors prefer to work in well-heeled communities where practice is more lucrative, leaving the rural and inner city areas to others. True, the detailed evidence is from the United States and from the UK and also from Europe. But several Australian states today have a ready supply of lawyers and doctors in capital cities and a distinct shortage in rural areas. Carol Shakeshaft, who was in Australia at the beginning of this year, argued eloquently in one address I heard her give that in education, equity and excellence are inseparable. She said, the reality is that excellence cannot be achieved in education without equity. Although an, although an equitable system may, may not be an excellent one, true excellence in education can't exist without equity. The two are not at odds, rather they are dependent on each other. Equity of access, equity in training, and education and ongoing professional development. And in the service we offer the public are integral, not optional, to excellence in education. But it's a challenge for us to find how to express that in our profession. Next two. We need to think and to get a firm agreement on who constitutes the profession. Professions necessarily include some people and leave others out. In education, the challenge is to get agreement on who's in and who's out. Sometimes we stretch schools and teaching to increasingly assume responsibility previously allocated to other groups in the community, families, nuclear and extended, business, trades and local government, 
And it's perhaps not surprising that we've become confused as to who constitutes the profession. As Professor Paige Porter said when she was actually in this state, in the profession of education, the we means teachers, principals, superintendents, central and regional office resource personnel, administrators and teacher educators. Who then is excluded? Professor Porter argues that the we is not the department or ministry, the union, the college or the university, or even the government, state or federal. All of these organisations in which we work are clearly important in dealing with issues. We is also not the students, nor the parents, nor the community. They're also clearly an essential element of the education system, but they are not part of the profession. They are partners with the profession in the pursuit of good education. In Australia too, we have a further challenge, and certainly in recent years, and in historically, we have a peculiar ambivalence about the question of the autonomy of the practitioner and the control of the organised profession. We frequently have employing authorities of those who work, work in the field frequently assume that theirs is the professional voice. On the other hand, and increasingly in the last 20 years or so, various unions have also assumed that theirs is the voice of the profession, just as some professional associations have. There's a challenge there for us, therefore, for us to work out not only who we are, but which voice and whose voice is that of the profession. Hoyle, in his work, notes that recent changes in schools have put an emphasis on collaborative teaching and collaborative decision-making, collegial relationships. To some extent, these necessarily infringe the teacher's previous autonomy in their own classroom, their own lecture theatre. But collaborative decision-making offers teachers the opportunity to enter into wide-ranging professional discussions. It, in fact, has been shown to inform professional debate. Finally, at the core of teaching lies the teacher or the lecturer's interaction with students. Most notions of a profession emphasise that the practice is informed by a body of theory and research. That throws up, for those of us who work in education and in teaching, and in fact for all of us, the question of what is the knowledge base of teaching? Is it just that of your discipline? Is it an art or is it a science? We've seen, again in the last 15 years, a good deal of work in the United States from Lee Shulman, from Edgar Stone and the UK. And indeed, we've seen some work in Australia contributed to by the staff of this university. But there remains a great deal to be done before those of us who teach can convincingly answer members of the public clearly and unequivocally in ways that will convince them that teaching too has its own expertise, its own particular and professional knowledge base. I'm sure that the quality of education you've received at this university equips you as its graduates to move the profession of teaching forward and to find both individual and collective resolutions to the issues I have raised. 
I hope that you will rise to that challenge and I hope that in meeting it, you will continue to work with the staff of this Faculty of Education. Congratulations and best wishes. Thank you. Deputy Chancellor, it's my pleasure to offer on behalf of all assembled here this afternoon our thanks to Professor Mailing for her challenging address to our graduates. It is an address which I'm sure will be of great significance not only to this year's graduates but also to all of the staff of the Faculty of Education gathered here with us today. Because uh, Professor Mailing has spoken about uh, one of the most important issues facing our society, as also been acknowledged by Mr Fussell, our Deputy Chancellor, the important issue being to return teaching, to restore teaching to the key status that it perhaps once occupied and should occupy in any advanced and civilised and advancing society. Because uh, owing to the intrusions of some of the matters that Professor Mailing has mentioned, the status of teaching has in some respects diminished. I'm sure that the points that Professor Mailing will be noted by all our graduates, the importance of caring and nurturing, the importance of finding a balance between professional autonomy and the bureaucratic, the bureaucratic model as she calls it, the importance of recognition that excellence and equity are indeed inseparable rather than alternatives. And finally, the great importance of finding a voice for the profession of education that transcends matters of growth and matters of bureaucracy and matters of unionism and all other matters that are, are relevant but not transcendent. Now on this occasion, uh, Professor Mailing has addressed the teaching profession, but it's important for us to note that today is the first graduation day for another important initiative of the faculty and the university, the Justice Administration Initiative. And I would think the issues of professionalism, of caring, and of finding balances between professionalism and bureaucratism are matters of just as great importance to our graduates in Justice Administration and all other areas of the faculty as to our teachers. Deputy Chancellor, may I invite everyone to thank Professor Mailing again for her contribution. <laughs> and may I take this opportunity of offering my, my congratulations to all our graduates and to exhort them, as I do to every group of graduates, to join the Alumni Association and stay supporters of your university. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, the Griffith University Collegiate Singers will sing the traditional student song, Gardiama Sigatur. Please rise as the singers enter and remain standing during the singing. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is now concluded. When the fanfares begin, please remain standing as the Dais party, the staff procession and the graduates retire. Thank you.